What's up guys, Scott getting back to you from Harley Nobar 1250. Bikes on the lift, we gotta do a few things to it. First and foremost, I did not run out in Fountain, Florida. I did not looking, did not go due to looking at the weather forecast. I was going, planning on going all week long. Um, the HDRA was in Fountain, Florida. Weather, um, they got the event in, which is great. That's good news. Um, and about the event, first and foremost, uh, Thoughts and prayers go out to John Cabral. He was on his bagger and he wheelied up and it pivoted on his rear fender and he went over. He went to the hospital, he was okay. He's kind of sore, beaten up a little bit. Bike can be fixed, but man, thoughts and prayers to you, uh, John Cabral, is on your uh, recovery. We're sure we'll see you back out on that bike soon enough. It was a wicked fast weekend for him. And on a bigger note, Dr. Jimmy McMillan, Dr. Mac, he, uh, on his top fuel Harley, he went for a ride out the end of the track. I was not there, so I can't comment on all the details. I just know, um, he was going for the brakes and the bike was pushing through the brakes. Um, shoot went deploy. Um, there's lots of videos that covered it. Cycle drag was out there. Jack did a great job in getting coverage on all the races that went on out there. It was wicked cold. They had rain. I'm sure it wasn't a very pleasant experience for anyone out there. Uh, I applaud everybody that showed up and dug through it and stuck through it and got the weekend in. Um, thoughts and prayers to Jimmy Mack for his speedy recovery. Um, by all means, I'm going to insert a picture here. Um, you can go on the Bad Apple Racing's Facebook page. They have advertisements there in the Bad Apple Racing um, homepage, the racing homepage. They are doing a pre-order for t-shirt sales and the proceeds, I believe, are, are to go to Jimmy Mack for his um, recovery. He's going to be down and out for a while. Um, he has a few broken vertebrae, I believe, a few broken ribs going on. So he's going to be out for a while. Proceeds are going to be going for, I believe, don't quote me on it, for his recovery. But it's all to support that racing team um, to get them back out there and to get that bike rebuilt. I know that whole team will come together and work on that bike and get that bike back in its tip-top shape and he's going to come back better than ever there's probably going to be a bunch of whole new innovative things on that bike i can't wait to see it but again thoughts and prayers go to jimmy mcmillan on his recovery hopefully you get a fast one bud and john cabral hopefully you get back we'll see you back out racing soon as well On to what I am going to do with my bike. So this weekend, if you are a local in the Bradenton, Central Florida area, there is a 590 index class. It's going on. It's called, um, what is it? The Little Guy Nationals is what they're calling it. It's a big car race, and they've just added the 590 index bike race. It's a $100 entry, $1,500 to win. Um, I believe your time runs are going to start about 2 o'clock. It's scheduled from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. is the time frame this coming Saturday, April 1st. $1,500 to win, $300 for runner-up, $100 buy-in is what the buy-in is on it. So there will be cars running, and then they did the separate 590 index bike class. So if you don't quite understand what the 590 deal is, um, and, or index racing in general is you have to run as close to 590 as you can with beating the opponent in the other lane but not going faster than your 590. So if you go faster, it's an automatic loss, you break out. Um, so my plan is to be there with Miser here. Um, he's, uh, I gotta do a few little things. I don't know if you can tell, you really kinda can't, it's not really in focus there, let me see. So as you see, my battery there is held in with a bunch of zip ties. So last time I went to Bradenton, my battery was dead, it was shot. And my, that spare battery I have in there did not fit in my battery box, so I couldn't use it at Bradenton. So my buddy said like the following week, like, hey, let's go to Orlando. And I had a spare battery. Um, so I was like, yeah, sure. And I didn't even think nothing of it till the morning of, and I'm like, oh, I never adjusted the battery box. So I had to cut the bottom of the battery box out and that is installed with the zip ties. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna put a bottom on the battery, the bottom of that battery box. So we're gonna get back to uh, some bike racing. Um, but again, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna be doing too much traveling this year with the AMRA and HGRA stuff. Um, 
just simply because like everybody i mean it's the economy it's the fuel cost to go and do it um even to go to the hdra when they were five hours away from me i mean it probably would have been 700 hundred dollar weekend um to do it for a chance to win 400 bucks and again it's not all about the money um because we do it because it's, it's a passion and you can't look at it i mean racing is is a losing proposition no matter how you look at it whether it's that truck whether it's this bike whatever it is it's going to be a losing proposition but you just got to kind of figure out economically which is your best losing proposition where you're not possibly going to lose more you're going to enjoy yourself so i enjoy myself you know uh, i enjoyed traveling the circuits with this bike you know the past couple years it was great but i enjoy just as much going and doing the local test and tunes and putting my numbers up and knowing what the bike runs and i can get into so many local races um where payouts you know are, are very comparative and i don't have to have as much money out of my pocket and it's local so the travel time the time off of work it all adds up i'm sure everybody puts the pen to paper and thinks of the same things in the long run and picks their one or two events that they can do a year and um that's what i did and the way it comes down is just i'm not gonna be traveling as much so as i said there with that trailer i have sold that trailer out there um the gentleman is picking it up sunday um, so I'm actively looking for a open car trailer, a solid deck open car trailer, so I can get that truck around and use it at the same time to put the bike on and lock the bike down. I don't want to go with a bigger enclosed trailer because, again, the whole point of that other smaller trailer was light and efficiency when I'm traveling for better fuel mods and things like that. I'm not looking to buy a big diesel pickup. My Tahoe will tow just fine, just trying to be as efficient as possible, and um, an open trailer behind it will work out just great if i'm towing the bike everyone's like well what if it rains and gets on the bike if it's raining i ain't going you know i mean it's it's florida down here you know worst case is, is i cover the bike cover the carburetor up cover the electronics up i mean all the car the electronics are basically covered on this thing they're underneath places where they're not going to get wet unless you're specifically taking a hose to it um and ironically probably this weekend i will probably roll that thing in the back of my Tahoe instead of taking the trailer because the trailer is bought and paid for the man just had to go do the title and bring come back with his plate and pick it up so that's the update on the bike stuff I got you an update on the truck going on there um, so that's pretty much all I got for you is of anything that's coming up so um, in the future we've got like I said this Saturday we've got the bike race um, this weekend also well, let me forget AMRA is out at Bella Rose, Louisiana for the Cajun Nitro National. So if you're local to that, you know, get out to to, to, to the, the track out there. It's, I hear it's a beautiful facility. I'd love to get out there and see it sometime, but I just didn't put it together um, to make it happen this, this go around. Maybe next season if they go. I mean, there's only so many times you can say that and these, pla these places close up or they're not around anymore. So if you've got a bucket list of things, just do it. you got to just do it. But back to it, um, hope everybody travels safe, and I hope they have a great weekend, great weather. Um. What's up, guys? Just getting back here to working on the truck. And uh, today, finished pulling the motor out. Last videos I showed you, I had the whole top end apart. So, um, kind of sat idle on it for a little while. Now we're going to pull it apart, pull the pan off of it, take a look. A lot of stuff that wasn't torqued right and didn't seem right. Bolts missing. Um, some stuff just not lined up correctly. Motor plate wasn't correct or anything. So uh, today's the day to pull it, pull the pan, check the torque specs on the cranks, on the crank mains and the rods. See what cam's in it and uh, evaluate from there. I did see over here, it looks like there was a head bolt that was messed up at some point in time that they stuck a time cert in possibly but it's concerning because the time cert catches my finger there and it's above the block surface so i don't know i don't know what would be the fix i mean obviously i guess you could just use a thicker head gasket keep it up above it that doesn't clench down to it but that's kind of not correct either um so before we did this this far Pulled the grill out of it, pulled the bumper off of it. The grill actually painted all black. Um, came out really nice. Bed is all on it now. I have some other pictures to put insert on there. The 8.8 .8 rear is in with the longer wheel studs that were needed. 
crawling clean here. You can see underneath of the bed looks all nice and clean. We're all bolted in. I put the three inch lowering blocks back on it. That's what we're in it to begin with. I don't know if I'll go with that or I'll go with Caltrex. Come in here. Put the proper um, cross member, trans cross member. The stock one wasn't the correct one that was on it. So I put the correct one in it with the motor setting in place where I wanted it. Measured for the dry shaft length before I took all this apart. So now I'm on the hunt to find a dry shaft. I mean, there's ones that are out of the junkyard that to say they just work because this is just a small block 350 with turbo 350 long tail trans. They say the stock dry shaft from a five speed truck will work, but I don't know about that because um, the stuff's been moved around here. Uh, my truck didn't come with a dry shaft, so that's why I'm looking for one. So this is where we're at on Saturday. We're gonna get the motor out, separate it from the trans. The trans is gonna stay in the truck for right now. Um, Cause I don't have a lot of room to work with stuff. So get it out and I'll get back to you. One good thing here is an SF SFI approved flex plate that's on there with the SFI approved uh, fluid damper balancer that's on the front as well. All right, guys, here it is. Plucked it out. Left the trans in. That's a pretty small converter. I got to pull that converter out to see what it is. Um, I don't see any markings on it from the backside, but it's... Uh, it's interesting to think to see what that um, stall setup or part number is in that thing because that is a pretty small converter for it. But some good bits, some good parts here is we have an SFI approved um, flex plate, SFI approved, which is good. We got a fluid damper balancer on it, which is good. So there are some good pieces on there. So who knows? Maybe we pull that pan off there and maybe it's not a 355 maybe it's a 383 so i guess we'll be, won't be able to tell until we get it apart but it doesn't have a flat tap of cam in it that i know for sure that is brand new lifters were never even used so i guess some overspray from painting i guess at one point in time it was an orange block now it's a black block but we'll get this apart and uh check back with you with what the uh what the cam is anyway we're going to be going away here shortly so i won't be able to get all the way into the bottom end maybe later tonight all right guys, you can see motor trans is out. Uh, I'll put some pictures in here um, after I pulled the motor out, which now resides over here, covered up in plastic. Um, I had some pictures I put in there of the crank, the rods. It looks like it's a stock crank, aftermarket rods, aftermarket um, hardware in the rods, or the rod bolts. They don't look like ARPs. Took some close-ups of the bolt with the numbers. Not sure what they are, but, it's a, uh, I guess it'd be like a 358 or a three, no, I mean a 358, 357. Um, it's 40 over, flat tap at cam. Cam, I have no clue what the camshaft was. As I showed you before, what the heads were and the top end was. Um, this here is the TransDAP cross member, which is very light compared to the stock one. This stock one cross member here uh, won't work in the stock mounts with that transmission. It's a turbo 350. Long shaft, two wheel drive transmission, supposedly rebuilt. I don't know, I'm gonna send it out and get it done anyway. Um, I'm kicking around the thought and the idea of um, doing a big block in this thing instead of using this 355. Somebody needs this 355, hit me up, we can work something out, swap some parts around. I'm always up for all that kind of stuff, but this is the Trans Adapt cross member that I used. And here is the box. My bit is slowly but surely taking over on things, but to go with that 355 SFI approved flex plate, fluid dampener balancer. I got some two inch drop spindles that I picked up off of Marketplace. There's the old the old uh, motor plate that looks like the Chevy bow tie. I got stuff all over. Cleaning my trailer out, I sold that trailer. 
Um, so I am actively looking for a open car trailer to get this truck around and that I can use for the bike. Different fuel cell that I picked up that I'm gonna run with uh, the truck here instead of the one that was in the blue bed because that was welded fast and like a caged in there and it was just kind of messy. We need a bumper or a roll pan for the back, which I have right in here. Sorry for moving the camera around. Tough to see. There we go. Got a brand new roll pan in there. Picked that up off of Marketplace. 8.8 .8 rears underneath it with 373 gears and the spool in there. I'm also looking for some 15 by 10 with a 7.5 inch backspace and a 4.5 inch bolt pattern wheel for the back back here. Um, these are 15 by 10s. I think it's only a 4.5 inch backspace, so it sticks out a little bit. On the front, we're going to do the spindles and we're going to do some sort of a brake upgrade and kind of research and what I can do for the cheaper brake upgrade. For that, I need to do the manual master cylinder. I got to figure that out up there. Also, I'm going to be looking for a manual power steering box. People say they're getting really hard to find, so I'm unsure what's going to go on. I'd love to do a rack, the uh, manual rack that these guys do, and the whole tubular upper control arms and, and um, hack all this stuff out of here, hack that cross member out of there and everything, um, and do all the tubular stuff from like TRZ or 417 Motorsports. But it's kind of just, I mean, that's kind of just out of my budget right now. Um, but what I am going to do is I am going to be cutting this cross member out and then piecing it back together, plating these ends off here, and then putting a piece of like chromoly through there to tie it back together just so it gives more oil pan clearance. I will be reusing um, the stock motor mounts in it, and we'll see how this plays out. When I set the trans back in where it was supposed to be, the um, was still about an inch off from where those mounts were for the motor plate. So we might just pick up another piece of aluminum, make my own motor plate, especially if I go with the big block. So that's kind of a quick down and dirty update on the truck. Now, I am also looking for wheels. These are borrowed wheels, five and four and three quarter front wheels with some front runners on there. This truck's not going to be street truck. It's going to be track only. So, um, anything along along those ways um uh, looking for a fuel pump yet fuel filter set up uh, fuel line i'll buy all that stuff new um uh, it's got a shifter and i'm going to looking for a lightweight steering column for in the truck you got a pistol grip bnm pro ratchet shifter got the painless wiring box in there um uh, you know just kind of stock interior i'm gonna gut this thing get everything out of here Try to make the truck as light as possible. It already has crank windows in it, so should be good to go. So that's kind of a low down and dirty on, on the truck here. The bed matches up pretty well. It sits out in the sun. You can see a little bit of a difference in color. Um, but overall, I'm happy compared to the blue bed. As far as the hood, I think I'm going to fill these hood pins back in. And Drag Race Solutions is um, they do the ones that do all the Zeus fasteners. They make the rails that go on here, which, you know, I probably could make it too, but until I buy the material and take the time and do it, I can buy them from him already done with the Zeus fastener. So I want to Zeus fasten the hood instead of those pins. I'm not a big fan of those pins. And then he also makes the bed cover, the aluminum um, Zeus fasteners for the partition, the, the bed covers off. And then eventually if it ever gets fast enough, we will put the wing out the back but we got a while for that to happen so again that's the fast and low down and dirty on the truck here update plans coming in future hit me up if you got some parts that i might have mentioned that i needed like comment subscribe share